says there's one watching, but I think it's just me. <laughs> good morning. If there's anybody else out there, good morning. I guess I should turn this down. Let's see, there we go. Good morning, Kathy. It's been a crazy morning. Oh, wow. There's five of you already. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you will. I sure would appreciate it. Good morning, Lisa. I think this morning we're going to work on another pin cushion. Last week I got um, um, a pattern idea from Aunt Beck, and I think she shared the link in the Facebook group, My Creative Year. Yeah, I'm in the process of rebranding all of the art business, which includes social media and th the thing to all the things for the things. And it's a lot of paperwork. Um, my daughter who's in graphic design and marketing is working on logos. So literally two minutes before we went live, I got an email from her about logos. So I was quickly going through them and telling her, I like this one, but can we make that change? I like this one, but I like this other thing better. And like all of the things. Like I have a 14 page proposal from her. <laughs> Nobody can say she's not very thorough. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna work on this hedgehog pincushion thing. Hedgehog porcupine. Hey now, um, there's a lot of different patterns on the internet if you wanna make one. Um, this one, like I said, it was shared from Aunt Beck's Creations. Um, and I think she shared it over in my creative year. So you probably can go do some searching over in that Facebook group to find her post. I printed it and then I glued the pattern pieces to chipboard. And then you can see I have a big hole here and some little holes here. The big hole is so that I can store all the little pattern pieces on a binder ring. So I don't lose anything like this ear piece. I have all my small patterns like on binder rings. Um, the little holes are so I can mark the placement for the eyes and where the ears get sewn on. So it has, this is the body piece. And then it has a little ear. And then this little shape kind of reminds me of an eyeball. Um, this is the bottom of the porcupine. So initially I was going to come on live today and we were going to make him out of felt, which is why all this felt is sitting here. And then <clears throat> this morning over coffee, I was like, wait, why are you going to do it out of felt? Why don't we, you know, you've got all this beautiful wool and some laces and we did the owl. And when I did the little owl, he was so cute. And I used cottons and lace scraps and I thought, let's do this one that way too. So what, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to take all of the floss off of here. We might use some of it, but we don't need the felt. Hedgehog. I keep saying porcupine, but it's a hedgehog. It says hedgehog right there. I told you it's been a morning. I started the broadcast that way. It's just the morning. My brain literally is in like 5 million places at the same time. Probably because of the rebranding of the art business and social media that we're doing at the moment. And my brain is just everywhere. Okay, so we're gonna make our hedgehog. We're gonna do the base out of some wool. Now I've got some beautiful felted wools. There is a couple of Etsy sellers that sell these scrap bags of felted wool. They don't have them all the time, but when you want like little small pieces of felted wool, it's a great place to go get it, especially right now when you can't go thrifting. That being said, if you are somebody who likes to go thrifting, getting those pieces of garments 
that are made from 100% wool, but are really cheap because they're very worn or have a hole in them or a stain, those are great to do this with. And you just cut them apart, save the wool, toss the rest, put it in a washing machine with some hot water and soap and um, put it on a full heavy spin and then put it in the dryer and it should felt up and thicken up and it makes something that's just really beautiful to sew on. And I know I'm just like, if I say anything else incorrectly, just let me know. I keep calling him a porcupine, but he's a hedgehog. I'm going to show you. So we're going to go through the whole process from start to finish. First, I have to kind of pick out what I want to use for. Obviously, you can see I couldn't quite make up my mind this morning because, you know, it's kind of morning I'm having. I don't really think I want him to be out of this one. I think it's too pink. I'll leave some of these other ones. I want... This one would be nice, but can we get all the pieces out of this? Let's see. Oh, yeah, maybe. I might want his ears out of something else. I don't know, but we can get him out of this. All right, so I'm going to use a black ballpoint pen. That's right, black ballpoint pen. Oh, the, oh, this, this pattern. So I just cut it. Um, I glued it down with some Elmer's. I just used Elmer's. I glued the, the whole sheet of patterns to the chipboard with Elmer's. And this chipboard is the back of a paper pad. So it's not quite as thick as your crafting chipboard. I save um, the back of the paper pads, um, especially from the dollar store drawing paper. They work well for something like this. Now, back in the day when I was still working retail and I could get my hands on the um, cardboard or plastic signage when we were sw switching out the displays, I would use that and that works really great. And occasionally you'll see me with a pattern that has um, like pink and white plasticky stuff on the back. That's what that's from, it's retail signage. Um, and then once the glue is dry, I just cut it out with a pair of scissors. You could use a, an X-Acto knife or a uh, box cutter, but I just used a pair of scissors. I would recommend waiting for the paper to dry. When I don't wait for the paper to dry, it like narfs up the paper because the paper wants to move around. So I'm going to put my hedgehog on here. We'll try to go on straight of grain because, you know. I'm going to use uh, my black pen and I'm going to trace... There we go. Around my hedgehog. And then I'm going to put push my pen through the holes. And hopefully There we go. And make some marks on my hedgehog. Yes, yeah, cereal box will work. Pa uh, cardboard packaging, that works just fine. Um, I But then I just let the paper dry completely and then I um, cut it out with scissors. Th these are the pattern pieces for the owl that I did. Did them the same way. Um, fabric scissors. Let's see. And just cut them out. You can do one at one piece at a time if you're worried about the pieces not cutting to the exact same size. I'm obviously not worried. <laughs> okay, so then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip him over. And I'm going to mark this other side the same way I did the first side.
Yeah, in the midst of rebranding and everything else, um, working on some new a new product idea. So that's like a thing because I needed one more project to do. Okay, that'll work. So now we have our two sides of our hedgehog. I keep wanting to call him a porcupine people. All right, so we're gonna wait to cut out the ear, but I need to cut out that bottom piece. It's kind of an important piece. You can do the assembly of these kind of things on your sewing machine, but I think they're actually easier to just do by hand. And you know, one of the reasons we're doing the slow stitching is because it's a very relaxing, in my opinion, meditative process. Um, and especially right now when the world is so crazy, I think we all need a little bit of that. Okay, of course we'll save the scraps because you know, it's hard to throw any scraps away. Okay, now if you look at the pattern piece, you can see that his nose goes up a little bit. It says to sew um, the hedgehog around this edge and around the nose until you get to the, you're supposed to leave the flat part open. Project. Okay, buffering again, because you know, I don't know. It's crazy. Y'all back now? Okay. Um, again, we're, we're broadcasting with ethernet, so it shouldn't really be buffering, but the entire world is on the internet at the same time. So yeah, I don't know. We're going to use regular sewing thread for this. And we're going to sew again, in case you missed it, we're going to sew from here all the way around, around the nose, just until it starts to flatten right here, right about, right about there. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to mark it. And I'm going to mark it on the, on the hedgehog. I want to mark it on the other side. Okay, I'm just going to put a little pen mark so I know where to stop. I'm going to put my pieces so those dots I made where the eyes and the ear go are on the inside, which is my right side. So right sides together. I'm going to put on the reading glasses. So I can actually see what I'm doing because you know, that's a thing. We'll grab a needle and some sewing thread. This is regular kind of sewing thread, but this is a thicker one. This is upholstery thread. Okay, Kathy. That's okay, my neighbor up until a few minutes ago had somebody um, outside washing his windows, which is fine, but it's very echoey where I live and all you heard was the window washer moving his ladder around. It was very loud. Okay, so we're gonna tie a knot, we're gonna use double strand. And we're gonna just do really small stitches, just do a small running stitch You do want to do, keep your stitches kind of small because it is a pin cushion and um, you are trying to do some assembly. Why do I have a loop right there? Why do these things always happen when I'm on camera? There we go. Okay. So to do the running stitch, you go in 
and then about an equal space and then go out. I would do like an eighth of an inch or a 16th of an inch, something really small. I probably should zoom in for you all, huh? So you can see what I'm doing. Just checking to make sure I'm in focus. Okay, so you just want to do these little tiny stitches like this all the way around. Now, if you're working with a little bit thicker fabric like I am, you want to keep moving it around, or you know, you could do the smart thing and like actually pin things together. And you could just like do, I would put a couple pins like this so things don't shift around. I wouldn't do a big seam allowance. I would do, again, about an eighth of an inch, no more than like a quarter of an inch in from the edge. If you want your hedgehog to be a little bigger, of course, when you print the pattern, you just increase the size um, and, you know, print it at like 150% or something. Scale it up. You don't have to have a sewing machine or know how to use a sewing machine to do stuff like that and make these cute little accessories for your creative space. And right now when things are what they are, we all need those little things that'll make us smile and make us happy. It's super important. Sorry about the squeaking. That's actually one of my um, table wheels. I have a, a dream to have a big Ikea work table in here in the middle of the room. I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon, but. So we're going to sew all the way around this top edge. Keeping our thread sort of taut. And we're going to sew all the way around to where I made that little mark right here, where the nose starts to curve down and flatten out to the bottom of the hedgehog. Now this wool is a little bit stretchy and has a little bit of a give. So if I sew too much, um, I can pull it just a little bit. Of course there's a truck. Cause why wouldn't there be a truck? And I have all the windows open by the way, cause it's warm out. Lovely. Somebody's backing up. At least it's not the UPS truck that has the, instead of the beeping, it screeches. This, this, these make great Christmas presents. These little homemade gifts, these little pin cushions and little cute little animals. You could totally do this as just a stuffed animal um, for, you know, a um, child in your life. I would recommend doing all the facial features as embroidery and not something that could be yanked off and swallowed. Um, but um, I'll, also your little creatives, um, your creative friends, I'm sure would like it or creative family members. Yeah, I'm sorry, Lisa. I, we were happy and sad at the same time last night to watch the news and see that the smoke from California is indeed coming all the way up here to Northern Oregon, but the way the wind is blowing, it's blowing it East and it's actually missing Portland completely. Um, I don't live in Portland, but I live south of Portland, so we haven't gotten any of it. Thank goodness. So just make sure as you go that you're pulling your stitches taut, but not too tight. So you don't want to pull them so tight that your piece looks like that. That's too tight. Oh, Barbara, welcome. We're not painting today. We're just sewing. But um, for those who are new to the channel, I started out my creative life as a seamstress and fabric cutter for Chuck E. Cheese. There's a name you don't hear too much anymore. Um, 
was the only skill I had out of high school and I had to pay the rent. So I worked at Chuck E. Cheese factory making robotic character bodies. <laughs> um, I've done made wedding dresses and done alterations and so many things in the creative world. Um, as an adult, I decided I wanted to do more with drawing and painting. So I started playing with watercolors, still my favorite medium. I discovered mixed media and art journaling from Tracy Bautista. And when I got hurt at work and couldn't do my regular day job, I was taking a class from Pauline Agnew and she, I did one of her techniques, but I used what I had. I didn't know what she was talking about when she talked about a jelly plate. I couldn't figure out what a, um, why you would use a plate of jelly to print artwork with that didn't, I haven't, I had no idea what she was talking about. So I um, did it a different way. Um, mono printing, um, that mono printing video is still on my channel. Um, and I didn't know how to get her the video and show her what I was doing other than putting it on YouTube. I was, I did watch YouTube before that, but I didn't broadcast. And then that just led to what you see today. Um, I was bored at home. I had nothing else to do. So I just started making videos and I used to film with my iPad or my phone. Then I had an old, old, old camera that I filmed with. And then I had a professional camera, more professional, not professional. And anyway, I'm back to filming with my phone for the most part, which is weird. Okay, so it doesn't say to do this. And you probably don't really have to, but I think I'm going to. Because this is such a curve, I think I'm going to take my little tiny pair of scissors and I'm not gonna do super deep cuts, but I think I'm gonna do a few little cuts to just give the fabric some ease. And I'm seeing right here, I need to do a couple extra stitches. I'm a little too close to the edge of the fabric. So before you get too far into it, you probably wanna just double check and make sure You've done your job correctly. <laughs> Let's not do extra steps. Let's see. Oh, thanks, Barbara. I know, you know, I've thought about stopping the vlog so many times, but every time I say that I'm thinking about stopping it, somebody says, no, please don't. Um, so... I don't think my life is that interesting, but some, some of you do. So, all right. And the family has gotten so used to vlogging that there's a couple of things coming up that my son-in-law has already said he'll vlog for me. He says, is it okay if I use my phone? I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, you don't want to put it on your own channel because they have a channel they've kind of neglected. He said, no, that's okay. I'll do it for your channel. I said, okay, cool. <laughs> so there'll be some of that coming up in the next month or so. But yeah, there's no, there's not too many creative things that you can do in your space um, that I haven't tried already. You know, whether it's floral, floral crafts or clip polymer clay or, you know, I've, us I've usually tried them all. I don't necessarily like them all, but I've tried them all. Diamond painting is one I haven't tried yet. I don't, I'm not gonna, I'm trying really hard not to like get into that. So pushing the nose out is gonna be a little challenging because this is thick fabric. I'm just using the end of my pen. I do have this thing. I don't know what it is. Oops, here we are. I don't know what it is. It's from my grandmother's sewing box. I'm kind of assuming it has something to do with lace making because I know she and her mother, my great grandmother did do lace making and tatting. I use it for pushing out things like the nose on the hedgehog.
He's going to be cute. Okay. So then the idea is to put this down here to fill out the bottom. No one in this life is interesting. Actually watching how people in other parts of the world live. Yeah, I ha even had my friend Mike Deacon recently message me about some things and asking if we were okay. And um, yeah, I also inherited a bunch of egg darners, which I have. Some of you will know what those are. Some of you won't. Um, yeah, Mike Deacon was asking me if we were okay and safe because he's in the UK and he was like, I'm seeing these things on the news and, you know, are you all right? And I'm like, I'm fine. So this is just scrap fabric that I use for stuffing these things. I've showed it in other slow stitching videos. The costumers call their scraps cabbage. And when they're making things like bum pads and things for underneath their costumes, they use these cut up little pieces of fabric, the cabbage. I love that word so much um, to um, stuff their items. So sewing this is gonna be challenging, but we're gonna give it a shot. Oh, good, tell him I said hello, Barbara. You know, Mike being Mike, of course, he asked me a question about something because he's working on a project, which led to both of us thinking and then led is, is leading to both of us. Um, <laughs> Let's just say we're working on something, you know, <laughs> one, one question led to another question, which led to another question. Yeah. So it's a thing <laughs> like Mike, you gave me extra work. <laughs> oh, they seem like they're just sweethearts. I have not, of course, met them in real life because I'm over here on the other side of the ocean. So um, although we were planning on trying to go to Europe again this year, but, you know, then Corona hit. So I'm not too worried about how this looks because we are not done. But I do want to get a fair amount of stuffing in here and kind of stretch this out a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna start. I think I might just start in the middle here. I need the reading glasses. Yeah, I have my grandmother's old ice pick, which she had, um, covered the pointy end with a cork, a uh, wine cork. I still have it with a cork on it. I use it. I have her little scissors and she had these little teeny tiny needle nose pliers and things. I use them all. Nobody else wanted her sewing box. They were going to toss it out or put it in the estate sale. And I'm like, wait, can I have that? Oops. Yeah, Barbara, when you see Mike, ask him what he's been up to um, that he had to ask me questions about. <laughs> Maybe he'll tell you. Now, when I did the owl, I just gathered the bottom and then I covered up um, the bottom with um, uh, English paper piecing hexagon, which was, I think, a little easier than doing it this way. I haven't, before anybody asks, I haven't tried this pattern before. It's the first time for me. He probably won't. <laughs> he might, you never know.
So I'm just trying to grab this little point. There we go. And then I think we need to turn it and like do this. All right, so as you're doing this, you're gonna to wanna, to, um, don't sew it all the way up until you finish um, catching all of the stuff. Um, what, I'm losing the English, you guys. I was telling my son-in-law and his parents the other night, we were having dinner and I said, you know, one of the side effects it seems like, cause we were of course talking about the virus, I said, you know, I'm losing the English. I can't think of words for things. I go, and it's not anything else other than stress. I go, but it's really sad because I only know English. It's not like I'm, you know, multilingual like they all are. I can see when they lose the English sometimes because they're not originally from here, but, you know. So again, I'm not, I'm doing sort of neat ish stitches, but I'm not being super neat about it because we're going to, we're not going to leave them this color. Now I have a bunch of um, little bags on the table around me, which I don't think you can see because we're zoomed in, but I have bags of fabric scraps. I do sort my bigger scraps by color and texture that I'm going to use the ones I'm going to use for slow stitching. So, so you just want to sew him all the way around. We're just trying to close up the bottom. Now, because he's going to be used as a pin cushion, you do want to be, of course, before you make those last few stitches, like I said, you want to make sure he's really stuffed really well and that, I'm trying to make sure I'm on camera, sorry. Um, he's really um, stuffed firmly. Okay, when you get to where the thread is too short, you need to tie it off to get a new piece. Um, tie it in it, not like this. Pull it firm, push the needle in near where that knot is into the bottom and then cut it and then the thread tail ends will be inside your hedgehog. So yeah, so while I'm stitching, we can definitely talk about things like that, but hold on, I need to um, put my glasses on to thread the needle, but then I can't see the chat with the glasses. It's a thing, you know, it's what happens when you get old. <laughs> um, sticker machine is worth, uh, totally off subject, I know. So yeah, I don't disagree with Lisa now, and off subject discussions while I'm sitting here sewing are perfectly acceptable. So don't feel like you can't ask whatever questions you want keep it clean. That's the only thing I ask. Um, keep it clean, keep it respectful. But anyway, that all being said, um, I have the small one and I have one of the bigger ones. I would say to you, um, get the small one. Um, I find I barely use the big one. Um, but I frequently use the small one. That being said, I do have a silhouette cameo, cameo, the little one. Um, I use it too. I've only recently started using it more 99 times out of a hundred. Traditionally, it's just been easier for me to pull out the Xyron because the silhouette software to do a print and cut of your artwork or drawings to make stickers was just supremely frustrating. Recently, I figured out what I was doing wrong. So, you know, there's that. I'm going to do him, I'm going to stuff him some more and make sure I don't really have that much extra of this bottom piece. Um, 
I may get rid of my large Zyron. I haven't decided yet, but um, I'm definitely keeping the little one. If you have polyfill, of course you can use polyfill, but if you're just not, you know, like most of us, not really going out, not able to get out to go places to get supplies, you don't have polyfill, you're out, whatever. Um, you know, fabric scraps work, yarn scraps, thread scraps. I put thread scraps in here. Um, maybe you have a piece of fabric in your stash that, okay, I have some of these, whether it's fabric or something else. You know, at some point I look at it and go, why, why, just why did I buy that? Why do I have that? What the heck was I thinking? You know, maybe if it's fabric, then you can just cut it up and use it for stuffing. Maybe you have an old t-shirt that's just way past it. Instead of throwing it in the trash, cut it up and use it for stuffing. Really just pushing this in, getting it really full. Let's see. Feels like he needs some something up there in his nose. I mean, yeah, if you're doing purging and cleaning like the rest of us, then um, because you're bored at home and have nothing else to do <laughs> uh, and you're uninspired for art projects, all, we're all there right now with you. Um, you know, maybe take some of those clothes and things that you were going to pur purge and, and toss or purge and donate and maybe use them for crafty projects. Okay, I think that's pretty good. That fe feels pretty firm. So we're gonna try to close them up. I do think I'm going to do this though. Let's see if we can get some pins in here, make my life a little easier. Because he's stuffed, I can just put him straight in. Without sticking myself, no blood on the project. Didn't we discuss that, that last week? Um, I don't know. Nine times out of ten right now, because our supply chain is just so messed up here in the United States, I am just finding that I order things online. It's Even when I can get to the stores and I feel comfortable going out, um, and their website. Okay. So like yesterday and their website says they have it in stock. I go down there and they don't. So one of the projects that, well, the project that Mike and I are working on, I, um, needed some parts for, and Michael said they had stuff in stock and they did have most of it, but they didn't have all of it. And their website's just not that accurate. And a lot of companies are like that right now. They just don't have the time to, maintain the inventory on them and honestly it's just easier to get it online that being said sometimes you order it online and it never comes but i don't think xyron's probably going anywhere i mean it might get a little difficult to get the refills but if you're part of a creative community like we all are you know you can let your creative friends know hey does anybody have some spare Zyron tape for the little Zyron because I'm out. None of my stores have it. I can't find it online. I mean, you know, that's what we all do. Mike was so cute. He said, if I need any of that DMC floss 535, this dark gray color, let him know because they have a lot of it at his stores where he's at. So he knows he's been watching my vlogs evidently and knows I can't find it. I have plenty right now, by the way. Nobody send me any. So now I'm just going around and catching all the corners and edges. Here we go. Take 
tucking in little pieces right here as I'm stitching. So it looks semi neat, like I sort of know what I'm doing. There we go. If I'm not live on camera when I'm doing this, so I don't know about you guys, but I will turn up the radio. I'll use Pandora or one of the playlists on my um, iTunes. If I'm really feeling stressed, I will turn all the devices off, including the telephone. I do still have an old iPod that does currently still work most of the time. And I will use it to play some music while I'm stitching. It's very, re I find it very relaxing. Okay. So as I'm sewing them, I'm just going to keep fluffing and shaping. He just looks like a funny egg at the moment. I do think we're gonna use that gray color for his nose. I think we're gonna to try to find some little buttons. I have some buttons off to my left out of, out of, folk, out of sight of the camera. I'll show you them in a minute. And I think we'll try to find some little buttons, black or gray buttons for his eyes. I still don't know what color I wanna make, what I wanna make his ears out of. Uh, maybe some of the gray felt that I had pulled out. There we go. Okay, so we're to the end now and he's all closed up, so I'm gonna tie a knot. And then I'm going to go back in like this and out. And then I'm going to pull and cut. And then everything is inside. And of course, because I've made him with wool, he's picking up every little piece of lint that's on the table, but that's okay. All right. We'll save the needle and thread. We might need it. So I think the first thing I want to do is give him a face and put his ears on before we do anything else because he's kind of looking a little sad. So I have taken buttons. These are, you know, from years of collecting buttons from my grandmother's button stash from friends, uh, creative friends sending me buttons. And I've sorted them by size and color, excuse me, size and color. Um, I am kind of wondering if a dark blue button would be good for his eyeball. What do you all think? Maybe black. Actually, it looks like I have the right size in the black. Hold on. Hey, Anita, how are you? So I have these little tiny ones in the black bag. I think those would be cute eyes. Yes, they would. Look at that. Alrighty. <clears throat> so I'm going to just use thread that's already on my needles. So if I'm done sewing a project and the thread is left, I don't take it off. I just leave it in the needle and I have this thing that I made. It's in the spool of thread. It's just like a pin cushion on a little dowel and it goes in the hole of the thread spool. I do have a piece of gray thread here. Let's use that to sew the eyeballs on. Oops. So have any of you made dolls or pin cushions or anything like that before? Well, dolls, because some of the, one of the ways I'm going to attach the eyeballs, the same way I would if I was making dolls. So I'm going to put the needle in this side in the little pen mark I made for where the eyeball goes. Whoops, off camera again. And I'm going to come out the other side in the other pen hole. 
pen mark. I'm going to trip the trip. What did I say about losing the English? I'm going to trim those long little tail ends that are sticking out. Okay. I'm going to grab the button. Now, instead of sewing it concave part up, I'm going to sew it down. I like the way that's going to look better, I think. I'm going to go in one hole, out the other hole, and then back down near where that thread came out and out the other side over here by the knot. I know how many of, oh, here we go. Ouch. Blood on the hedgehog. Um, how many of us used to make things like when we did the craft Christmas craft fairs and stuff, you made um, damn it dolls. That was a pattern I came across recently that I still have. Okay, then I'm going to come back over here sort of underneath this button. The idea is to get the eyes on, but have the knots and the thread ends hidden, right? And so then I just tied a knot and then I'm going to kind of go out like this, like we did before, so that that knot gets pulled underneath the button, pull it a little bit tight, clip the threads, and then the threads will be inside the hedgehog. And then he now he has eyeballs. Okay, we need to give him a nose. Do I wanna do it with embroidery floss? Or do I wanna do it with fabric? So a dammit doll is just a very basic rag doll that's sort of in the shape of a large gingerbread man. And he has a poem usually printed on a tag or I used to print the, po print the poem on a piece of muslin and attach him to the center of his stomach. And um, I forget what the wording is exactly, but it's a cute little poem about that basically says instead of, you know, taking out your frustrations on those around you, um, you know, just yell, damn it, damn it, damn it, and slam the, ball, do the doll on a table. You could probably Google the poem and it's, I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Just Google damn it doll. Ooh, I have an idea. I wonder how that would look if we did his nose with a bunch of um, French knots, but I wonder if that would be too busy. Maybe we should just do satin stitch. I'm gonna go this way and see if we can hide that knot. I'm using all six strands of some black embroidery floss. And I think we're gonna just take some long stitches sort of close together AKA satin stitch. Which I happen to suck at, by the way, FYI. So we'll see how this turns out. I did try to do satin stitch on a project earlier this week, or oh, I should say, I shouldn't say that, late last week. And um, I ended up ripping it out because I didn't like it. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm sorry if you all hear that squeaking. Ah, oh, it is obnoxious. Even if it's messy, I think it's easier to cover the nose with um, some stitches of black embroidery floss than to try to get in here with little pieces of fabric. You could, of course, you could paint it. Why couldn't you? That's ugly. I don't like it. See, this is what happens. 
I don't like it. part of the creative process. You don't always like what happens. See? So if you feel like I can't do this, I just spend so much time ripping stuff out, but out, I don't like it. You aren't the only one. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I almost wish I had some black silk flower petals because that would be cute on the nose. But I have this. And it could make a little nose, a little nose. Out of some cotton. Um, this is dark fabric, so I'm going to need a white pen. <laughs> so if I ever tell you all, I, you know, I'm not a perfectionist. Just do what feels right. Okay, that's kind of a lie sometimes. Don't listen to me. So I'm going to use this little scrap of fabric to make a nose. You know, if you had a stash of silk flowers, which I do, and you had a black ones, you could just snip off a couple of flower petals. Hang on a second. I don't know if I have any black ones, though. That's the thing. I mean, you know, we all have stashes of flower petals around. Well, some of us who have trouble throwing things away. See, I do have... I have these back from back in the day when, you know, silk flowers were a thing. Oh, look at that. I wonder if I could use that. Might be a cute nose. Okay, the trick to this is going to be snipping this in half without it unraveling. And oh, maybe using some fabric fuse, which is fabric glue, which I don't always do on projects like this, but. In this case, it might be a good idea. I gotta get the safety seal out. I think that might be easier said than done. Let's see. I need something pokey. Where's my pokey tool? There we go. Got it. Fabric Fuse is a fabric glue. It's made by the people at E6000. But see, I am thinking, how cute would that be? I think that would be really cute. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is put a piece of tape on this. 
Just use regular scotch tape. That way you still have that if you want to do something with it. It's not going to unravel all over your table. I'm not going to pull on this one too much because it will unravel. I'm going to trim it just a little bit. Get some of that glue on here. So when you're working with your slow stitching, don't feel like, well, you know, you need to stitch everything. It, you know, you're not supposed to use paint or glue or anything. Bull, bull pucky. You know, it's just like anything else in our creative mixed media world. Use what you have. Use what's going to work and not make you completely frustrated. If I can get this to stick, it'll look good and not unravel while it's sticking. <laughs> it will look good. We'll see. That's, that would be another reason to save the other half. He kind of looks like he might have a mustache going on, but that's okay. This might not work, but that's okay. We just only covered the nose with the um, glue. So if I need to pull this off because I don't like it still, that's, that's all right. And very possible because, <laughs> you know, I'm a closet perfectionist, so. That's not going to work. I don't like. <sighs> this is what happens. Welcome to my world. All right. Do I want to be bothered with this or do I want to just cut a piece out of felt? I might want to just cut a piece out of felt. See, this is what happens. Is that going to be the right shape? I have no idea. Okay, I like that better. So we're gonna go with that. Yeah, noses are, so when you're doing something like this, you know, is the nose part and the, the eyes are easy. Noses are hard. But if you need to glue pieces on, don't be afraid to break out the glue. 
There's nothing wrong with that. Speaking of which, I should put the cat back on before it dries up. Okay, I am gonna try to hide this, the knot if I can. And I do think I'm gonna just take tiny little like tacking stitches not unlike what we did to attach the bottom to the hedgehog. Ugh. There's a lot of fabric right here and now I put glue on there. So it's gonna be a challenge. I'm up for a challenge, you? Hello, hey Aunt Beck, how are you? We're working on uh, the hedgehog. This is my third try at the nose. <laughs> so hopefully, it comes out this time, we'll see. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through the other side here. Try to pull this down. See if we can get this tacked on. And then maybe we'll do the ears out of the same ugh, gray felt. That might be cute. I don't know what color hedgehogs are supposed to be, by the way. I'm just making it up as I go. Okay, that's cute. I should probably put a piece down here because it looks kind of naked on the bottom. Is that a thing, naked nose? Hey, Mary. You could embroider it on. I tried that first. Um, I didn't like the way it looked. <laughs> but yeah, you could, and you're probably supposed to. What is this? What does this say? Um, embroider the nose with black thread. So you totally could. So I do think the bottom of his nose looks naked, so I'm going to sew this piece on. Uh, again, the pattern was one that was shared by Aunt Beck, and she shared um, uh, it over in the My Creative Year Facebook group. I'm not sure where else she shared it. She might have put it in A Life of Art and Self-Expression. And no problems, Mary. No problems. No, this is my third try at the nose. I tried embroidery first. I didn't like the way it looked. Then I tried just appliquing a little piece of crocheted black flower on there. didn't like the way that looked either. So, um, yeah, we're just using felt. I used buttons for the eyes, but you probably could just do French knots. Okay, now I'm going to, of course, tie a knot in this. And then we're going to pull the knot underneath. And hide the tail at the same time. Pull it a little taut, tight, cut the thread, and then it just automatically disappears inside. That is much better. Now, all of these little bits that got unravely, I'm going to just put them in my cabbage um, basket, and we will use them on a, as stuffing for a future project. So nothing goes to waste. So we have this here. 
That's pretty cute. He's getting there. He needs some ears and we need to do something. I want to put something back here. I do have an entire box of black glass head pins. We're going to use the back of him. Oh uh, yeah. So I didn't do that, but also too, when I've made these kind of um, things, when I have, um, when I was still doing arts and craft shows, um, I made these kind of things and I would fill the bottom with um, BB shot, which you can get at Walmart in the, um, you know, sporting goods department. And that way they were not only cute, but they held down things on windy days. Nice find too at the um, thrift shop. Okay, so I want to figure out what I'm going to do for um, this part of him. I have lots of different ideas, but you know, I have different fabrics and things and lace and things and. I'm kind of thinking some black cheesecloth with maybe this piece of fabric. And this isn't actually cheesecloth, cheesecloth. This is from like the Halloween department. So, you know, right now is when you can get this kind of stuff. So I'm actually kind of thinking this little piece of fabric like sewn across his back with some of this netting on top and then all the glass pins sticking out. Yeah, uh, just different kinds of little trims. Pull out your trims. Pull out your, if you're, if you're like me and you still have a box of, you know, fabric flowers and you totally could, you know, why couldn't you just cover his back in flowers? I mean, I have this whole little drawer full of like ribbon roses. You could co cover his whole back in roses. Let's get some ears on him first. So I have that ear piece. Where'd it go? Let's cut another piece of that same gray felt because I think that would be cute. Oh, you too, Anita. Okay, so because this is gray and um, I don't think the other, well, I don't know this pen's gonna write on here. Let's see, no, it's not. I don't know if the ballpoint one will show up. Well, maybe. So I'm going to just outline my pieces in pen and then cut them out. When we got started, um, I marked um, with um, a pen, the part, the placement of the ears and the eyes. So when I'm cutting them out, I will cut out, um, sorry, cut off the ballpoint pen since these will be his ears and they will show from both sides. I normally don't care, but So one ear, um, other ear. Now I'm thinking if we sew the ears like this and then sew them on, that would be cute. So yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. I don't wanna, I think I wanna use the gray thread, which is somewhere on the table, which is covered in stuff. That thread will work. So one group is called My Creative Year. The other group is called A Life of Art and Self-Expression. Lisa, if you're still here, can you throw some links up? Um, just so you all know, the links for both Facebook groups should be in my link tree list of links, which is in the video description.
I spent most of yesterday <sighs> fixing all of the video descriptions on every video on my channel per my daughter's instructions because we're rebranding some stuff. And she said my things don't look right. And yeah, so anyway, that was a thing. <laughs> so I think I'm going to just try taking a little sort of a tuck in the center of the ear with a couple of stitches and then we'll see how that looks. Maybe one more. So that when you open it, it kind of does that naturally. And then that's what I wanna sew down, I think, right on those dots that I drew earlier. Yeah, if you all make some hedgehogs, I would love to see what you do and how they turn out. You of course could do a better job than I am of modeling them after a real hedgehog, um, but you don't have to. And you know, just remember that these are supposed to be fun you know, little homemade accessories or gift items um, to make you smile in your art space. Um, I mean, you know, the owl that I did has feathers for, um, you know, across the top of his eyeballs. So he's not exactly what you'd call realistic. Okay, so then I'm going to do that and then pull. I think he needs another little stitch right here. Now, if you get, if I give him a tail, I think he's going to look a little bit like a mouse. I think that that would be a thing, but you know, you could very easily turn this into a mouse. I have to try to remember to be on camera here. You guys like say something in the comments. I do get involved in stitching and then forget to like check the camera. So I'm going to go over here to this other side. There we go. So that's how he looks right now. That's cute. I did tie a knot right there to hopefully have the thread kind of stay. I'm not going to cut it off. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to just take a little stitch like that. Hey, Beth. Oh, so those that don't know, there's Elizabeth new in the chat. That is my sister, Elizabeth. Hello, welcome. I'm making yet another pin cushion because, you know, I've got to add to my pin cushion hoard in my art space. I have a little forest of animal friends at this point. Not that there is anything wrong with that. I probably shouldn't have had any extra coffee today before I started this project, just saying. Super Beth, and by the way, there's two Beths. I think of my sister as Beth. Um, Elizabeth Bronzini is my sister, Super Beth is not. Although she's a friend and welcome. It's nice to see faces in here in the chat that I haven't seen in a while on YouTube. I'm trying to remember to stay in camera. I'm having trouble because I'm trying to get this ear on. Like with the other one, I'm going to go into the back. I'm going to take an extra stitch in the back.
it's cute. I do notice one ear is bigger than the other, but you know, what are you gonna do? Well, I don't think we need to deal with it actually. I think we can just leave it. So I'm gonna tie that in a knot. Pull and then stick the needle in and come out at a different spot again and pull it a little bit tight and then trim. So there's our little hedgehog's face. He's kind of looking like a mouse, but I'm all right with that. So I'm gonna first sew this piece on. I really like the idea of taking this piece and sewing it on his back. That being said, it might be a little bit big, but let's see. I think we could just manipulate it enough to sew it down and have it be flat. So I think we're gonna do that. We're gonna use the same um, sewing thread. He's a cute little guy. You totally, again, you totally, I think, could use this pattern to create a mouse. Just give him a tail. I'm just gonna use a running stitch to tack this down. So ultimately, it's not gonna show too much. It's gonna be under the black netting. I am using some vintage silk thread which um, sometimes um, breaks, which it just did. Cause you know, I'm pulling too hard. So I'm doing sort of big-ish running stitches. Again, I just wanna get this down and get it flat. Wait till we, you see him covered with all the pins at the bottom. Um, on, he's gonna have all these little black pins on the back. Cause I think that would be cute. I probably should have made him brown and beige because I think hedgehogs are brown. But fun fact, when people ask me what my favorite color is, I tell them black, have for years. They're like, no, a color. I'm like, Ugh. well then if you make me pick, probably teal, but I really like black. Ask my sister. Okay, so I'm gonna tie these in a knot together. And you guys let me know in either the comments here or um, on the live recording or over in the Facebook groups what you would like to see next week. If you want to do more slow stitching or if you want to um, go back to doing some painting or something. Sure. Oops, sorry. Sorry about the squeaking. That was my chair. Okay. Now, normally when I do do these um, sort of pin cushion things, I don't usually do a lot of fancy embroidery stitches because that would um, interfere with the sticking the pins in it. Um, you, of course, as per this pattern, could do it on the face. I kind of like the idea of creating more of a, a fabric um, collage with these patterns, using up the little scraps and bits, the buttons and things, maybe some flowers and whatever little small bits and bobs you have hanging around your creative space. Here I am off camera again. Mm. 
Yeah. Oh, that's true, Elizabeth, who has cats. Cat toys. I don't know that I would have these be a dog toy if you have a dog like my daughter's dog, Lily, because she would just eat this. <laughs> but these would be a cute cat toy and you could fill it with, you know, a squeaker or something if you want. I do know you can buy squeakers. You put jingle bells in there. Okay, so I'm not going to take the thread out. I am going to trim some of these loose hairs off from the edge of the fabric. I'm going to figure out how big I want this piece to be. I do think I kind of want it uneven. Ish. Let's see. I'm going to just start whacking pieces off because why not? I'm going to just do this. So this is the right time to buy this black netting stuff, cheesecloth stuff, because it's all over the place right now because of Halloween. And it's, I love having it around to do these kind of projects with. So I'm just going to manipulate these, this piece until I'm happy with the placement. I'm going to pull this thread forward so it's out of my way. I'm going to use some pins to sort of hold him in place. I am kind of getting the impulse to stick a flower on his head because, you know, why not? So I'm going to just manipulate the fabric until I'm happy. Hey, Kathy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, because I'm not embroidering him, I'm just doing a fabric um, collage. So um, which is what I think of slow stitching as I just really think of it as a fabric and thread collage. Um, that's pretty cute, but how cute would he be? Holy cow. You know, I, I did pull out this basket of flowers. Holy cow. How cute would that be? Do I have one that's smaller? I do have smaller ones. <gasps> Okay, I think we have to put flowers on his head. Because, you know, he's a goth hedgehog, but he needs a little pop of pink. <laughs> All right, so my thread ended right there. So I'm going to just grab sections of the um, netting and do um, sort of loops of stitches. My sister makes fairy houses and things, by the way, you guys. Creativity definitely runs in my family. We had a grandmother who was a very creative person. And when you wanted something new, she said, well, don't you have something you can make that with? And Elizabeth and I spent a lot of time at her house growing up. So I'm going to go around tacking the netting down. And as I do, I'm going to pull the pins out and maybe manipulate the fabric further. I'll tell you what, I'm getting ready for this hedgehog and deciding this morning to use wool and lace on him instead of felt made me realize that I need to, the next time I am brave enough to go to the shops, I need, I need more black lace in my collection. How, how did that happen that I don't have a lot of black lace in my collection? So I'm not going to cut that little piece off. I'm going to just leave that hanging there. I think that's cute. Oops. See? That's cute, right? Mm. 
Yeah. When the neighbors come over, you know, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm the paranoid sort, but I just automatically assume something is wrong. <laughs> so, you know, I don't find it a pleasant thing. They don't usually just come calling for no reason. Yeah, catnip, jingle bells, a little squeaker. I know you can get squeakers um, without the animal. It would be cute. And, you know, the patterns for these things are free on the Internet. They don't aren't costing anything. Okay, so that's really short, so we need to tie that off. I have a habit of continually sewing until my thread is nearly too short to tie a knot. Don't be me. <laughs> okay, so we'll tie that off. Make some more thread. So yeah, what well, you know, next week's live broadcast. Um, let me know if there's something specific creatively that you'd like to see me try make experiment with we can continue to make more of these little animals i can show you how i made the owl although there's a tutorial for that out there well there's a number of tutorials for those out there on um youtube i can show you how i did it let's see <laughs> Kathy, you're funny. She's been, um, when we were all growing up, Elizabeth was a lot of war, a lot of syllables. <laughs> so um, she got called, called a lot of different versions of Elizabeth. All right, so there's a pin hiding in there. Let's get that out. Okay, this black netting stuff on here, this is cute. <laughs> um, you just want to tack it down enough that it's going to stay. Um, to be honest, he's not um, one I'm going to worry about the netting falling apart or anything. I'm going to try to tack it so that it stays well enough. But if you were going to use this as a daily um, tool, you might want to like trim off your netting or maybe use black lace instead of this because it's it might unravel. If you do enough of these tacking stitches, it should be fairly stable. I also don't stick my pins in all the way. Um, I leave them sticking up. So they're easier to grab. So there's less stress pulled on this black netting or the lace or whatever's on the pin cushion. So we're just taking a few stitches here to hold some loose pieces down. She makes these great fairy houses and she's got this big piece of property in Utah um, where she can um, put them all over her backyard. Okay, so we're gonna tie this off. And I'm gonna try to, there we go, push the needle through and trim. How cute is he? I think he needs a couple of flowers on his head. I have these little teeny tiny ribbon roses that from some project like a million years ago, I did a lot of stuff with ribbon roses for the artist cooperative gift shop I used to be in back in California. Random 
the piece of thread. Oh, he's cute. Okay, so we're gonna stick one up here. I wanna stick one up here, like kind of behind his ear. poke the needle out down here. Because I think I want to put one there. Oops. I really should have a symbol on for this, but you know. <laughs> I'm gonna tie that in a knot. And then take a look at him and see if he needs any more flowers on his face because I think he's a hippie hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, maybe repost the pattern um, that Aunt Beck um, and with your picture of the one that you made. And yeah, my sister, I always got asked if Gina was short for something, but it's not. It's just Gina. He's cute. So let's get his pins in him, and then I'll decide if he needs more flowers. What do you all think? So I have these black glass head pins. Oops. Well, I'll tell you, Elizabeth and I have a chuckle about it all the time. I know our other sister doesn't think it's funny, but I am so glad when my parents had me, they decided not to name me Karen. <laughs> I, do, I do have a sister named Karen. <laughs> which I'm sure she doesn't like at the moment. <laughs> Let's see, take my glass, reading glasses off so I can see. Good morning, Barbara. Yeah, so we were always called by our full and complete name when we were in trouble for something. And my mom usually yelled it out down the street. So we all knew, the whole neighborhood knew we were in trouble. Bent pin. So these are short pins. These aren't very long ones, so they bend really easy. But again, these are really just pins that I got because I thought he would be cute with all these black pins in the back. I wasn't wrong. How cute is that going to be? Has everybody seen the little owl that I made already? I made him first when I started doing these. He was easy. So for those that don't know, Lisa is in California and she's near where some of the fires are at.
So, and those, for those just joining us, I stuffed our little hedgehog with some um, of the fabric cabbage, the fabric scraps. Um, I didn't use polyfill. I do have some, um, but I have all these fabric scraps, so why not use them? There's another bent pin. I don't really need more pins or another pin cushion, but at this point they've sort of become an addiction and they just sit in my windowsill by my sewing machine um, near the forest view from my art room. And uh, I'm kind of thinking that I'm going to end up making sort of a forest family of pin cushions because, you know, I don't know. I, I like it. Makes me happy. Does anybody have any questions or ideas for what to do next week, what you'd like to see? It doesn't have to be sewing. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. One thing I want you to learn today by making the hedgehog is you saw me, I, I took the nose apart. Was that, That's our third version of the nose. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, making mistakes and redoing your work and rethinking your work. It's part of the creative process for like everybody I know. So don't feel like you're a weirdo because you can't get it right the first time. Most of us can't. Oh, mushroom. Oh, Becky, you, I saw that notification just came. I do want to make a mushroom that is on my list of things to do. So thank you. Holy cow. I don't need to go look for patterns. I just have Aunt Beck. She goes to find them for me. I love that. It's like having an assistant, which is on my dream to do list. I really want an assistant so badly. But then I don't trust people. So that's a whole other thing. I know. Yeah. So, cause why not? I, I just, you know, I like making my little pin cushion creatures and they're fun. I don't know what else to say about it. And I like getting back into the hand sewing and I know our grandmother would be so happy right now that I'm sewing cause she was, that was a thing. Although she'd be upset with me that the embroidery wasn't neat and clean on the backside, Elizabeth. <laughs> How, Um, how, how accurate is that, that grandma Jenny would be, uh, upset that my embroidery doesn't look neat on the back. And yes, my dad was a big, um, Gina Lola Brigida fan and thank goodness they chose Gina. But growing up, I do have a cousin named Gino. So that was a thing. Yeah, everybody's sending firefighters to California. Thank goodness. We are getting some of the smoke here in Oregon, but not where I'm at. Um, and it's going all the way up into Idaho. So how cute is that? Like, you can't tell me that's not cute. Like, honestly, that's too stinking cute. Well, thank God I didn't get the name Karen. I know our other sister is like having a hard time with that right now. <laughs> I think it's funny. I'm sure she's not appreciative of the fact that I think it's funny, but <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Our old house. 
um, as of yesterday, was still on an evacuation warning list or watch. They're very near one of the fires. And um, the park behind the house, as far as I know, hasn't caught on fire yet. It has in the past, years ago. If it catches on fire, that house is in trouble. That whole neighborhood's in trouble. Thank you. I can't wait to go. I'm going to go um, download. I'll go download the mushroom when we're done here. Maybe we'll make mushrooms next week. Okay. How cute is that? Yeah, um, California is home to, and that San Jose area is home to a lot of wildlife. Yeah, I'm not surprised. How cute is he? And I love the fact that he's got some flowers on his face. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I love that. <clears throat> Yeah, Elizabeth and I, um, with our family, spent a lot of time in Big Basin and Little Basin growing up. We did a lot of camping, and there's some very fond memories of being there with our grandparents. Um, all of that's all gone now, from what I understand. <clears throat> cute is he? Holy cow. It's that cuteness overload. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Comments, concerns. We can certainly work on a mushroom next week. You totally could do this little guy and you could paint his face on. You know, updating your artwork is not a bad thing. We just got the um, new cabinets from my husband's garage, which came on wooden pallets, Elizabeth. And I told Bob not to throw the pallets away to save the wood because has anybody seen the, the video, uh, the movie Eurovision? Who's seen the movie Eurovision? <clears throat> In the movie, if you've seen it, um, there are some fairy houses. I think she calls them fairy houses um, up against a hill. So Elizabeth, you've seen my property. I want some, I want at least one fairy house up against the fence leading out into the woods. So I told Bob as soon as he gets his garage back together, that's going to be his next project. Yeah, she'd be especially happy, grandma, our grandmother, because some of these tools and parts I'm using, um, like the buttons, they're from her button box. How cute is that? I could keep going with the pins, but... I'll, I'll get the little... Um, Ow, let me zoom out a bit. Ugh. There's my, my table there. That's what my table looks like. I literally have like two feet of queen space. <clears throat> so when I was cleaning and purging, when this whole COVID thing started, 
and I found all those cross stitch kits. I also found this kit for this strawberry shaped pin cushion that I made and it's made out of similar wool to the hedgehog. And it had these um, pins that are decorated with polymer clay in the kit. Then years ago, I bought this bird and the bird is actually a tape measure. So he's been around for a while. And you know, last time we made our doll, right? She sits with all of them. And this is the owl I keep talking about. Yeah, you know, so we all have these jars and boxes of sewing things, you know, from our grandmothers and other loved ones, friends maybe that have passed away, which I have some of those too. Um, you know, the family after they pass says, you know, I don't know what to do with this stuff. Do you want it? Um, and of course, being who I am, I say yes. Um, and you keep it for years because it, you know, fondly reminds you of the person in question, but... Having it just lay around cluttering up space um, is not to your advantage. And how happy would they be if you were using it? Um, I don't ever need to buy another button for a project because I have so many buttons for my grandmother and other people who have either given them to me or um, who um, other people who have passed on. Um, I, I have a box of buttons, but they don't do me any good just sitting there. I did sit and they were literally in a giant like box mixed together. So I did separate them out by size and shape and color not long ago so that I could find them when I want to do projects like um, the hedgehog or the owl. Um, and I knew exactly where they were. So maybe next week we will make a mushroom. I've been wanting to make a mushroom. And I'm thinking like making it out of muslin. How cute would that be if you just did the top like gathered out of muslin with the base and did him sort of like the owl with like um, different cream colors. How cute would that be? All right. I think that's it for this week. We've been on an hour and 45 minutes, people. I do <laughs> I do laugh sometimes because I don't know what you all find entertaining about watching me. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's our hedgehog. I think that's it for right now. It's probably time to clean off my table since I can't really see most of the table. I have two of three large glass salad dressing jars with the original lab vintage labels on them from the 1960s. My sister Elizabeth, I gave her one of them. I, there were three. My two jars are full of ribbon and lace trims from my grandmother's um, stash mostly. And I, they're on my sewing room windowsill. I've shown them on, um, okay, see you later. Um, I've shown them in pictures on my Instagram and stuff before, um, with the pin cushions last week, I showed them with the pin cushion collection and I love looking at them with the pin cushions over there and everything else. So I'm with you. I love looking at the things, but I also love being able to find them easily so that when I want to use them for projects like the, this, I can. You're welcome. So this is our little hedgehog guy. The pattern is in the two Facebook groups. Um, if you didn't get the links for the groups in the comments, go to the video description once the video recording is up and go to my link tree list of links and both Facebook groups are linked there. One is my creative year. One is a life of art and self-expression. And um, we'll get you in and you can, if you're not already a member and you can get the pattern and make your own hedgehog. I would love it if you did make a hedgehog um, or a doll, if you go into the group and share a picture of your work when it's done. And Aunt Beck, if you're still around, if you make, um, if you have your hedgehog available, 
Um, if you can share a picture, that would be great. We will probably make a mushroom next week. I, by the time COVID is over, I'm going to have like a forest of animals but, and creatures and that, that's okay. Um, and um, we will keep going and keep having our slow stitching adventures and remembering old times and, re, you know, relaxing. I find this very therapeutic and relaxing. So um, we'll keep doing that. Oops. So. So oh, anyway, I hope you got, um, got some tips. If it's something that you think you want to make again, or you're not, even if you're not sure, I do recommend doing this and putting the pattern on chipboard um, and then using like a binder ring or a piece of string or something through a hole punch and just have them all like together so you don't lose the pieces. I do that with my uh, voodoo doll, uh, voodoo doll, zombie doll patterns and my um, art. I have anybody remember Dodie dolls? We can do those in a slow stitch too, little art dolls. Um, I have all of those patterns still. I've never thrown any of them away and they're all around binder rings like this. So everybody stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I sure would like that. If you have questions, comments or concerns, leave them here on the video uh, once the recording um, goes live um, or tag me in a post in one of the art Facebook groups. Don't forget to um, just have fun with the art. It's not about um, uh, perfection. I mean, look how many times I did the hedgehog's nose over again. Um, I don't ha have just the stamens, no. Um, I mean, I probably have things around. I can, you know, pull wires off of them things, but no, actually that's one thing that I don't have in my stash. I know you can get the little flower making um, or butterfly making stamens. Um, I don't have them. <laughs> You're all welcome here in my creative space anytime. Um, and again, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, you can tag me in a post in one of the Facebook groups. You can message me on Instagram. You can private message me on Facebook. I am all on all over all of that. So um, my email address is also in the video description when it goes, um, the recording goes live. So you can always email me. Someday, maybe we'll get my sister um, to do a live with me. How fun would that be? Two Bronzini girls in the same room together. Even if it's a virtual room crafting, uh, I got no idea what kind of trouble we'd get up to, but it, you know, it'd be entertaining probably. <laughs> All right, that's it for the moment. Don't forget to go out and do something nice for you. I think we're back temporarily. <laughs> we got the circle of death, death there at the end. I was trying to tell you all to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>